This is the Ford Mustang convertible. It's the 5.0. That means it's the V8. That means it's got 460 brake horsepower. It's got 533 Newton meters of torque. It has a top speed of 155 miles per hour and it will accelerate from zero to 62 miles per hour in 5.1 seconds. Now this one is a uh, manual car. And of course, as you can see, the top is down because the sun is shining. Now this particular car is about 50,000 500 pounds or so. This one has got the optional Magna Ride suspension for 1650. That's well worth getting. That has a different uh, comfort mode, sport mode, track mode, etc. This has another option for about 2,600, uh, 2,365 pounds, and that is a 12 speaker, 1,000 watt Bang & Lufthansa sound system. Now, how is that? Is it worth it? Well, I'll find out. I'll be running this car for a few months, and you can follow how I get on with it by just searching for hashtag BCG Ford Mustang. So, the other thing you're probably thinking is fuel economy, because right now fuel prices are in the headline and I'm just going to be running a V8 now. The thing is, Ford quote a combined fuel consumption figure of 23.3 miles per gallon and the top end that they say is 28 miles per gallon. Now, I've already done 200 miles in this thing. I took it up to the Birmingham NEC Classic Restoration Show, and I actually got the fuel economy up to over 31 miles per gallon on this car. So let's see how I get on with it. I think on the motorway, it does a lot better than around town. Around town, I'm not expecting so much. CO2 emissions, by the way, is 276 grams per kilometer. By the way, I have also reviewed the Bullet Edition Mustang and most recently the Mark I Mustang as well. They're both on this channel. Now I'll put the links for those in the description below and I'll also put a link for the short video I did on the fuel economy on this car. So I'll just do a brief sort of review of this car but make sure that you're following how I get on with this over the next few weeks, next few months by keeping uh, search of that tag which is of course as I said hashtag BCG Ford Mustang both here on YouTube but also especially on Instagram where I'll be posting very regularly on this car. We'll just have a look at the practicality very quickly, what the features are on this specific car and we'll take it for a little drive as well. quick look at the boot now before we do that you do lose a little bit of space on this one compared to the coupe because obviously they've created this cavity for the the hood to go down into the cover to go down into uh, having said that it's not too bad i mean you can probably put maybe three of those rolling uh, roll-on type of suitcases maybe even more actually back there there is i think those are the covers for the side bits just next to the hood there it's nice to cover them up if you're doing a longest journey with the roof down there's a massive woofer speaker in here plenty of bass coming from that i suspect then there's an underfloor compartment for the battery the triangle toolkit and you could maybe put a few squashy bags around there as well so that's quite handy Andy. Not too bad. Now the rear seats look really nice. There's sort of two bucket type seat arrangements there. But uh, the leg room, particularly under my seat, because obviously this driver's seat is set for my seating position, and obviously I'm six foot two with rather long legs, I wouldn't want to be attempting to sit behind there, that's for sure. You could possibly push that one a little bit forward and maybe get one person in the back there, or maybe one person sort of straddling across, perhaps that would work. Um, so maybe a little less room, uh, but that's okay. Uh, so here we are in the front. No concerns, obviously, in terms of space up here it's all very familiar it's got that traditional typical uh mustang double hooded dashboard here bang a lufson logo there it's got this very nice texture on this sort of almost an aluminium type of look but uh, it's actually got a feel to it so it's really really nice the uh, traditional three vents there the pony is right there in the middle there this has got a manual or stick shift as they call it in america um i do like the white cue ball but you get that on the bullet uh, or as an option i guess but not on this one you get the regular one otherwise it's all pretty normal in here particularly but especially like we've covered recently in the mustang reviews that i've done it's it's all very familiar but which means which is to say that it's all quite practical i mean there's a usb there usb there there's another power supply in there 
and over here you've got a coin box and stuff like that so that's quite handy um it always feels odd to have the handbrake on that side but i suspect that's because this has been converted from left to right hand drive so you know one or two compromises i guess that's not too bad so what have we got in here we've got a ton of equipment um obviously the engine up front which is of course brilliant uh but thirsty <laughs> and then you've got the uh, the power operated black cloth convertible roof um the 19 inch 10 by 2 spoke alloys with the black finish and they've got michelin sport uh four tires on them we've got led headlights at the front and at the back there's led rear lights as well uh power folding door mirrors with the mustang logo projection so that's kind of cool on there as well um fully independent front and rear suspension they make a big deal out of that because of course for so long mustangs had the the liver axle but of course now they do have full independent uh, suspension brembo six piston front brake calipers it's got the selectable drive modes as i mentioned so it's got normal my mode snow wet sport plus track and drag mode it's got launch control as well but only for track use uh climate control it's got the ford sync eight inch touchscreen with dab radio apple carplay android auto um and all the rest of it obviously this one's got then the optional sound system which by the way um is a 12 speaker premium audio with satellite navigation oh and also in that pack so i should have mentioned the 2365 pound pack that you get isn't just a 12 speaker 1000 watt stereo but it also includes the climate control seat so you get heated and cooled seats and then you get ebony partial leather wrap center console so that's this bit here um and then the 19 inch forged alloy wheels and silver so the wheels are also included in that so actually when you look at it like that that's quite an essential pack to have that's actually a must-have because you certainly want the climate control seats especially in the convertible um so the total then comes to fifty four thousand four hundred and seventy pounds uh what else have you got you got the leather sport seats um so with their power six-way seat adjust although the back is manually adjustable um but the front and back is power adjustable so that's how that works um same for the uh, passenger side as well keyless entry and start you can just walk off if you like and it will lock itself it's got a rear view camera as well on it adaptive cruise control rear parking sensors it's got lane keep assist and all the rest of it pre-collision assist autonomous emergency braking all the rest of it all that sort of stuff on there as well i do have to figure out how to turn off the um, lane keep because it can be quite aggressive but i suppose it's comforting to know that it is there in terms of the roof there is a little bit of an old school handle that you have to pull down and turn to release the roof before you then press the button to then power it back or to power it this way and then to lock it again you have to just give it a big old tug and twist it and turn yeah a little bit of manliness required there uh, if you like uh, a little bit of strength required if you like i shouldn't really say that should i because i have probably a lot of girls out there that are a lot 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 stronger than i am so <laughs> That's, that's really dangerous ground to be laid, to be stepping on isn't it all the rest of it in here let's start it up you'll hear it oh, lovely lovely v8 and then this all comes on and then this of course is configurable as well uh, according to the modes and all the usual stuff on there so actually we've covered a, a lot of this stuff before in previous mustang reviews let's take this for a little drive and see what it's like with the roof down and the sun shining what does it feel like to drive a mustang 5.0 in london now it'll only be a little drive because since I have this car for a while I'm going to be doing quite a bit of drive content on the car so I'm just going to take it for a very short drive just to give you a little bit of an impression of what it's like to drive the car um, or what it's like to fuel the car because I've just had to fuel it up I had it down to I suppose a third of a tank and I just filled it up at about 65 pounds to get it to pretty much full uh, by doing that so I like to put the the exhaust so you press the 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 mustang logo and then you go into the settings and you can set the now at idle you can't really detect it much but it's a bit louder when you're moving on and then you press the mustang logo again to go back to your trip computer i've done 237 miles in this car so far so it is actually one of those cars where manual gearbox and stuff the clutch is a, yeah, okay it's a meaty clutch I quite like that. I like, you know, there to be a little bit of heft to the steering and to the clutch and stuff like that. And the steering, of course, I can put that onto sports steering. So that gives that a bit of heft. Um and then of course you can set all these up as well in my mode, which um I've yet to do actually. I need to get round to doing that. But oh, 
the sound, oh, the staccato V8 muscle sound is just to die for. It's like, you know, you put 65 pounds of fuel into the pump and you're like, ooh, that hurt. And then you get in and you start the car and you go, nah, it's fine, it's okay, I don't mind. Because just for the sake of that noise and that instant torque, even like, you know, so what, what are we in now? We're, in, we're actually in fourth gear at that speed and still it wants to pull. Plenty of low down torque. And this is the thing, going back again to the motorway crews, the fact is that in a normal car at about 70 miles an hour, which is basically what I was doing, I wasn't going too slow, I was just doing a legal limit. In a normal car, you'd probably see, you know, about 3000 RPM, maybe even more. In this car, it was barely 2000. I would say it was probably about 1600, 1700 RPM, or sometimes even less. And that's pretty much how it cruised. So these big engines are, very, are not very taxed when they're having to do a high speed, but at a constant uh, momentum, they're generally fine. Around town, doing this sort of stuff is where they really struggle. Now, with the hood up, visibility out the back can be a little bit of a, a problem, but obviously now with the hood down, it's not a problem at all. I did drive it with the roof up on the motorway because simply because of the buffeting and stuff. I just thought, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be too much. Um, but around town, if, if ever I can, I would always put the roof down because, hey, why not? I mean, that's what you're paying for, that convertible experience. I never understand. There's one passing just now, actually, an Audi, the conver it's an Audi convertible passing with the roof up in this weather. It's like, why haven't, dude, why haven't you put that down or do that? Why haven't you put that down? Because, you know, look at this. How often do you get the opportunity to drive with weather like this? But I would put it down even if it was a little bit colder and stuff because that's part of the experience. So in traffic, the clutch will obviously start to get a little bit heavy, but so far I haven't had an issue with it. The thing is like, there's lots of room for me, for my feet and for my leg in this car. And I have long legs, so it's very comfortable for me to be able to stretch it out. Obviously then I've eaten up all the room behind me, um, but for myself, I'm okay. If I have to accommodate any be anybody behind me, as I did have to in the recent test with the Mach 1 actually, um, I was uncomfortably close to the steering wheel because I had to move my seat forward. Steering wheel is not so much of an issue um, because actually being closer to the steering wheel gives you good leverage on the wheel. If you watch rally drivers, they tend to sit quite close to the wheel. Um, but the leg is an issue because then it gets, then you're pretty much you're just folded up around here and that can be quite uncomfortable. The other thing you're thinking about is size. What is it like to drive this car in town? Well, it is a big car. There is no question about it. And you do have to be a little bit um, aware of that and a little bit cautious, um, you know, when sneaking out of junctions, a long bonnet and stuff in front of you. Um, and also when going into car parks and stuff like that, you just have to think about that a little bit. Do be a little bit circumspect about the size of this thing. Having said that, it's not unmanageable. Um, because remember, by American standards, this is a compact car. So, <laughs> you know, this is a coupe. But, um, so it's manageable. And of course the camera helps. And when you've got the windows down, the visibility all around is excellent. So that gives you a pretty good idea of where you are and where you're placing the car. But overall, so far, it hasn't proved to be too much of an issue. But I have to be honest, I've probably been avoiding taking it into tight space. And I certainly avoid with restrictions. The other thing about this car is that you get a lot of appreciation. Uh, you get a lot of looks, you get a lot of smiles. Um, even now, you know, there's some school children crossing the road in front of me um, and they can't help look over at the car. In fact, I took it to my daughter's college. I had to drop her off at college and uh, my friends came running over, uh, classmates came running over to have a look at it and to sit in it and to get some pictures with it and stuff like that. And I think that's one of the cool things about this car is that people appreciate it and not in uh, an offensive fashion as sometimes you get with very powerful cars or sporty cars um, or certainly maybe with supercars. With supercars obviously you get a lot of appreciation from the car parazzi if you drive into central London. Maybe not so much with this one but around town normal driving conditions and stuff like that I think you get a lot more appreciation with something like this. Um, it's one of those cars that people uh, they instantly sort of uh, it makes them smile, it makes them grin, it makes them, I guess it makes them think of movies really. And I guess that's one of the reasons that I like it so much is because it makes me think of movies. It makes you feel like a movie star. It makes you feel like an action hero, you know? Um, and that's the thing about this car. Now, if you watch my recent review on the Mach 1, then one of the things that I said about that car was I felt that the ride was much harsher than I could recall 
on the previous one that I'd driven, which obviously was the uh, bullet car. Um, and I think that that is confirmed having got back into this one with the Magnaray suspension. The ride is much better on this. It's much more compliant. Obviously, like if the road is really rough, you will feel it, but it's much more compliant. It's much smoother. You're really cruising around in it, which is really what you want to do. I mean, you're not really on attack in this car all the time. To be honest, not with fuel prices the way they are, but also because you just don't want to be obnoxious. You know, you just want to have fun. You want to soak it in. You want to soak in the sun and you want to just soak in the atmosphere of driving a convertible Mustang, you know? And that's the thing about this car is like driving it fast, driving it slow. I mean, sometimes driving it slow is the best experience. It's just knowing that you have that latent power without, you know, having to be constantly using it as well. Um, and even at these speeds, it puts a smile on your face. You know, you drive along in this weather like this with the, turn the music on after I've stopped recording. And I know that I'm just going to be enjoying it and I don't have to be going very fast to do, to do that. Having said that, stay tuned because there will be uh, one or two trips that I'll be taking to um, open it up a little bit and see what it's like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that quick introduction of this Ford Mustang. Like I said, make sure that you continue following hashtag BCG Ford Mustang. I have this car for a while and I shall be regularly putting updates, particularly on my Instagram, but also here on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification button so that you don't miss anything. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think of the Mustang. Would you get one? Would you get a coupe? Would you get a convertible? Would you get the bullet, the Mac one or a Shelby? Let me know what you're thinking. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments and I'll catch you all in the next video. A big shout out and thanks to Jay Williams over at Air Technic who are top tier sponsors of Brown Car Guy. Check them out at Air Technic Co UK for exhausts, brakes, suspension and body kits. Plus our other major sponsor, Nayajan Solutions. Much appreciation also to tier 4 sponsors, Muhammad Ali Humaid, Tom Conway Gordon and Reza Adil. And of course all these other guys who supporting on Patreon. Brown Car Guy is eternally grateful. Hey, think about joining them over at Patreon.com Brown Car Guy. If you can't, don't worry. Just make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channel and website. Plus follow on social media by searching for Brown Car Guy.